Hello, everyone. So yeah, today I'm going to talk about um, mixed nets and content routing. So um, yeah, so just to start off, I'll introduce myself. So my name is Elizabeth. Um, I currently work at Chainsafe. Um, and for the past few months, I've been working with um, Yanis and others and Will um, to discuss um, potential privacy solutions for libp2p um, and IPFS. So this is yeah, kind of a uh, spin-off or like summarization of some of the, the stuff we've worked on. Um, yeah, so I'm going to present kind of use cases, um, a bit of an overview for mixed sets of unroading, um, some of the impact for IPFS and P2P, and then some open implementation questions and issues that we would need to solve. Um, cool, yeah. So to start off with some use cases, um, yeah, we've already gone over some of these, but just to re-summarize, I guess. Um, so for IPFS, some of the main use cases are um, for lookup privacy. So obviously, if you want to look up some sort of information that maybe I don't know, sensitive, you maybe don't want people to know you're looking it up, or it's like politically banned or whatever. Um, basically, there's right now no way to really hide your IP um, from people apart from using maybe a VPN, but that's sort of centralized. You don't really want to do that. Um, you can't really rely on users to do that if they need protection. You want to kind of build it into the system. Um, and then similarly for um, users who want to like upload data to IPFS or users who want to pin data to IPFS, um, you would ideally want to have privacy for that um, for, I don't know, yeah, for specific um, sensitive content. Um, there's also kind of general cases that um, if this gets, yeah, if we had privacy layers to the P2P, that could be applied to other cases that aren't just IPFS. So potentially things like transaction submission for a blockchain. Um, so there's sort of some research that's been done on this previously with like Dandelion, but um, yeah, potentially we could use a similar idea for um, yeah, blockchains as well, just because a lot of blockchains now do use um, libp 2 p um, like yeah, ETH2 and Polkadot and Filecoin. Um, and then there's also the kind of generic case um, that people usually talk about, which is like a P2P chat app. Um, yeah, but then for, I guess, this presentation, I'm going to focus mostly on um, lookup privacy, or um, I think as, yeah, it was previously referred to as like reader privacy. Um, so yeah, essentially preserving privacy for someone looking up something in the system. Okay, so yeah, so brief overview of unroading. So um, this is what Tor uses, as you guys probably all know. So it's basically like a layered encryption approach. So um, basically you have a circuit um, consisting of generally three nodes between the source of traffic and then the destination of traffic. Um, and then you have the public keys of all the, the nodes in between, and then you kind of wrap the message in layers of encryption. So starting with firstly encrypting it with the destination, then the exit node, then the middle, then the um, entry. And then as you kind of move the message through the system, each layer of encryption gets unwrapped. So basically, this provides privacy for um, the traffic originator as, um, as none of the nodes in the system, apart from the entry node, know who it is. Um, so this is, I don't know, pretty, I don't know, basic kind of like low-hanging fruit in some ways of providing um, originator privacy. Um, yeah, so I guess for this, you have to be sure that the um, entry and exit nodes don't collude. So that's kind of one of the open questions if we do this in a, in a P2P way. So yeah, I'll talk about that a bit more later. Um, and then uh, mixed nets. So mixed nets kind of build a lot on top of this idea and add a lot of other techniques for providing stronger privacy. Um, so yeah, so with onion routing, as I kind of mentioned, um, you need to be sure that the entry and exit nodes don't collude. Um, and it's also, since it's still just like one message being relayed essentially through like a few other nodes, um, you can still, you're still vulnerable to things like timing analysis and like traffic analysis and that kind of thing. Um, so a mixed net adds basically more techniques to um, prevent against that. So it uses um, onion routing as well, but it also uses other techniques like um, combining messages together into like a fixed size bundle, um, holding messages potentially for certain amounts of time to kind of, I don't know, confuse the, the traffic flow. Um, it also uses decoy traffic. So yeah, just fake traffic to add more confusion, I guess, to the mix. So yeah, as you can see, like in the image, it's kind of each mix node takes a bunch of messages, bundles them together, um, reshuffles them, like sends them to the next one. So then by the end, you basically have broken the link completely. So yeah, so some existing and non-anonymity networks. So um, yeah, like I mentioned, there's Tor. So um, this uses just onion routing essentially, um, and its main purpose is for um, anonymizing like internet access. So um, it's not, yeah, it doesn't really apply necessarily to like um, IPFS or libp2p as it's not 
really peer to peer. It's more like um, you, I don't know, enter, enter the network, you find your circuit from the directory nodes and then access the internet that way. Um, but yeah, it's well known, it's popular, so yeah. And then there is I2P um, or the Invisible Internet Protocol, which um, is um, different from Tor in that it's more, it's P2P, um, it's kind of a closed network in that you only access things inside the network, like you don't really access um, the outside internet. Um, and it uses garlic routing in addition to onion routing, so it does some message bundling as well. Um, but yeah, I2P is like not really as mm -hmm. much used as Tor, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, and there's not been really a lot of research on it either. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of there. And then there's Dandelion or Dandelion++, which is designed specifically for um, transaction um, submission privacy. So it was used, I don't know if it's actually used in Bitcoin, but it's definitely used in Monero. Um, and it's, yeah, so basically it's just, it's a method, or it's a method for um, when you send the transaction to the network, basically gossiping it in a certain way that preserves privacy. Um, so yeah, you could kind of extend it maybe to some other gossip protocols, but um, it was designed specifically for blockchains. And then, yeah, and then a few modern mixed net projects. So um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, so there's a NIM, which is an incentivized mixed net. So actually all of these are incentivized. Um, but yeah, so NIM is an incentivized mixed net. Um, it uses the Sphinx packet format. Um, and then it, um, the mix delays the packets instead of waiting for a specific threshold and then bundling them together. So the point, or what they say the purpose of this is, is to basically improve the latency so that um, you don't have to wait for like a certain amount of traffic to reach, um, to reach the mix node. You can just kind of randomly delay it instead. Um, and then there is CMIX. So this is part of the XX network. Um, so this is also incentivized. Um, it uses um, a pre-computation for the encryption part to kind of improve on the latency. Um, yeah, and then it, um, unlike NIM, then it, it does the kind of normal mixnet method of like bundling the, the messages together. Um, and then there is Hopper, which is um, an anonymous P2P network that uses JS lib P2P. Um, it's also incentivized, also uses the Sync's packet format, but it's pretty different from NIM and CMIX in that it's P2P. So in, in, gen in mixed sense, generally the nodes sort of have like fixed roles, I suppose, um, in that they're like a mix node and versus like a traffic originator node. But in Hopper, they all kind of have the same, um, yeah, they're all, they can all be both basically, like they all mix for the other nodes and they can all be traffic originators. So yeah, it's quite different in that regard. Um, yeah, so then basically how can we apply this to the P2P and IPFS? So um, one method is um, onion routing. So generally um, the read hop onion routing is like the traditional kind of onion routing that's used. Um, and then you could use this for providing lookup privacy. So for example, like DHT lookups or looking up CIDs in IPFS. So it's sort of simple, low hanging fruit in that regard. Um, you could do like a very kind of basic design where you kind of randomly pick, I don't know, three nodes and then make a circuit out of them. Um, but then you could get range it from kind of simple that maybe doesn't have that good of security to like a really, um, a more complex system um, that has like maybe distinct node types, um, more like advanced methods of circuit selection, maybe um, yeah, having like specific nodes do specific roles and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I'll talk about that in a bit more in the open questions. Um, and yeah, and then just, a side kind of is that providing, um, so yeah, so this would only provide lookup privacy, doing the other way around. So um, getting a node to act as like a hidden service essentially, or basically um, to provide anonymity for like the receiver's message is much harder. Um, like Tor has, uses like rendezvous points, like a whole lot of other, um, yeah, implementations to essentially achieve this. So yeah, so that's, yeah, unfortunately not covered by this. Um, and then yeah, and then a mix net like design to protect more against traffic analysis and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it could kind of range from very simple and somewhat naive, I guess, to very complex, um, depending like how how much trade off we want to have um, in terms of like latency and that kind of thing. So yeah, there's yeah, so some open questions that um, we've um, discovered in our group um, relating to this. So one of the main ones that I've kind of mentioned already is how are circuits selected. So this needs to be like really carefully considered because basically if entry and, your entry and exit nodes collude, then you're kind of screwed because they can just 
talk to each other and then know where the message is going and where it's coming from. Um, so yeah, we need to very carefully consider this, I would say. Um, and then do we require a structured network for similar security guarantees to Tor? So do we need nodes to specifically be like entry, relay, and exit? Or can we have like more of a P2P method where any node can be um, any role? Um, and then do we need some nodes to act as directory authorities um, and basically have a full view of the network? Um, like, is it enough to gather the circuit from just like your peers or like whatever your peers tell you? Or do you have to like have some nodes be um, kind of authorities? Um, and then if we do that, then how do you kind of make it not just completely centralized? Um, and then, yeah, and then also how do we take into account network churn? So if you have like a circuit and then one of the nodes just leaves or whatever, then um, how do you deal with that? So a couple potential solutions are just fallback circuits or having like multi-path circuits. You can just kind of relay another way um, if that happens. And then, um, yeah, and then relating more to like um, libp2p specifics. Um, so how would we need to modify other libp2p components um, as there's there's been some work done on the Tor transport and it didn't fully, um, it has like, it didn't fully end up working because um, other components still need to be modified. Um, and then I'm gonna talk about a little bit more about that later as well. Um, and then how is latency gonna be affected um, specifically for DHT lookups? Um, and then also, do we make privacy opt-in or mandatory on a specific network? So yeah, that's kind of a, a big one, I would say. Um, Cause yeah, kind of relating to the other ones as well. Um, like we want a bigger anonymity set obviously, um, but um, people might not want to do the, might not want, might not want to um, have latency trade-offs. They might want to, um, yeah, not really have to deal with that. So design kind of concerns there. Um, and then how do we deal with the bootstrap problem? So um, since we need a certain amount of nodes on the network to have like a good anonymity set and actually like get, I don't know, an unrouting or mixent type design to work, um, how do we kind of deal with that when the network is small? Um, and then how can a network, so say we do implement this into lib P2P, so how can a, a network like isolated that has these privacy features built in um, utilize like the anonymity sets of other networks that also have this built in? So as we all know, like more nodes running this would be um, much better, obviously. So kind of do we want to avoid having like siloed networks that just have like unenroding or whatever like within them or do you want them all to just like talk and, and overlap? Um, so yeah, I think that's yeah definitely pretty important to think about. Um, and then finally, like do we need incentivization? So for a lot of the, um, or all of basically the modern mix sets, they all use um, a blockchain as a form of incentivization to get the nodes to actually perform the mixing correctly. So say, yeah, so say we do kind of go with a design, like do we need the nodes to be incentivized to um, actually mix or relay correctly. Um, and yeah, like if we don't like, for example, like with Tor, like it's all volunteer based, like are there problems there that could arise? Like could people just say like, I don't want to do it and then just like disable it within their node or something like that. So yeah, another open question there. Um, yeah, and then potential modifications to the P2P. So yeah, sort of touched on this, but a couple areas that I think pretty obviously would need to be modified if, um, we end up doing this. So there's auto NAT, which, so a node basically asks other nodes to um, dial its presumed public address. So this obviously like leaks its public address. So kind of to, yeah, so to deal with this, we would have to um, modify auto NAT in some way. Like we could have it maybe only ask specific nodes that it's going to already leak its address to already um, to do this. Um, but yeah, that may not work. Um, and there's the identify protocol. So this also, um, this happens when two lib P2P nodes connect and then um, it shares like the nodes public key and it's listening addresses, which also leaks its public address. So yeah, this would have to be modified as well. Um, so you could potentially have this so that like you don't really, so say you are, um, you have your like privacy mode on or whatever um, and you're like an unenrouted node, um, you can make it so that you don't advertise and then um, only just dial out other nodes that do um, advertise um, their public addresses, but I don't know, this might have some other implications that might make it not work. So yeah, another thing to consider. And then, yeah, and then finally, um, metrics. So, so yeah, so obviously, so yeah, as Will mentioned earlier, like this approach has um, definitely trade-offs, um, specifically <coughs> with latency. So basically like the more, um, the more you use like mixnet 
type techniques, the greater impact you're going to have on the latency. So um, yeah, first of all, like obviously a multipath circuit is going to increase the latency. Um, having stuff like message delays is going to obviously increase the latency as well. So um, we have to kind of consider like how much trade-off do we want to have there. Um, and same with bandwidth. Um, for just plain unintegrating, bandwidth isn't really affected as much. But um, for stuff like other mixed net designs, like um, if you have like bundling and that kind of thing, it definitely will affect the bandwidth. Um, there's circuit setup time, so like how long does it actually take you to set up the circuit? Like how long will it take you to find the right nodes, um, establish the connections and exchange public keys, um, encryption time, that kind of thing. Um, and then obviously the final thing is like the actual privacy or like the anonymity set. Um, as we all know, bigger is better and yeah, more nodes there is always better. Um, so yeah, these are kind of some of the yeah, main metrics to consider. Um, Cool. I think that's basically it. So, yeah, thank you for listening, everyone. Um, if Yeah, I would love to discuss this more with everyone. So if you have any ideas or thoughts or whatever about the, the open questions or just any feedback, um, that would be much appreciated. So, yeah, feel free to find me or contact me at my email. Um, yeah, thank you, everyone. Any questions? Yes. Um, how do the incentivization layers maintain anonymity? Because like, if you're losing money at some point, that money is going to go to a person in need space. How do you like avoid de-anonymizing yourself by paying into the incentivization or paying out? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, so um, with um, NIM, I know that they have like specific mix nodes. So these are like different from like the say like the client that's actually using the network so um as a client you want to have anonymity but then as like a mix operator you I, don't, I guess don't care about it as much so you essentially from what i know you don't have really as much anonymity there um it, it focuses more mostly on like the client part um part yeah and then for um yeah for hopper i guess you would have to consider that um i don't actually know <laughs> so yeah but I think the crypto is the like having a cryptocurrency. You you say somehow you're going to acquire the cryptocurrency. Either you get it through real life traffic, or you buy it through an exchange, and maybe you can go through an anonymous cryptocurrency too. That's the path towards how that's going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, are there like active efforts for integrating mixnets in with BTP and IPFS that I could follow? Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess that's kind of what we've been doing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. At least one is on the slide. There's that quarter friend that got started. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's, um, we're having, uh, we're looking to get every other week. Uh, and discussing progress and things that we're finding out. So everyone's more than welcome to follow that. So, yeah. Yeah. How, how, how has that been followed? Has that been followed? Good question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I guess there's uh, the Discord channel. Uh, <laughs> uh, there is a calendar invite that we have, and I can't, anyone, uh, it's not a larger group with a different, I don't know, channel at the, at the moment, but uh, if we go on the group, if we get. Um, we should do that uh, and get more than that. Make a program thing? Uh, sort of, yeah. We get a wheel and eventually the fund, but uh, the blue fund, they can go out. Yeah. We can have that if you're open top of the fund. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, I'm curious, just for an approximation of like how much more, what the latency cost of some of these mix nets are, but as a factor or something. Is there yeah. an absolute value to like using a mix net is this many times, this much times more latency than not in yeah. the context of like the or CP or something like that? Yeah, yeah, that's a really good question. Yeah, I don't think we have like any specific measurements yet, but I guess for unneurouting, if you're going to have like three hops, um, so that's like three extra nodes, and basically it would be like on average, like latency times four or so. So um, that's kind of like, I guess, the minimum latency kind of overhead. Um, yeah, so obviously, if we add more mix stuff, it would be more than that. So yeah. Five seconds, <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. 
for like not for a while. Yeah, I mean, it, I remember it being slow. It, 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 it is slow. Yeah. It takes a while to start up. I think that they claim most of ongoing connections are under a second <laughs> to establish, and that's because the servers are mostly relatively close to the internet port. So like. They, they don't have all of their own test and startups. They've got a lot of longer circuit yeah. right now. So yeah, well, the slow but not horribly <laughs> slow. Right. I mean, <laughs> you're not, you know, awesome. if, if you're using something like that versus like establishing a progressive with the key handshake on each type of the circuit, like there, we could make it slower. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah. yeah. Um, Related to that, perhaps a silly question. So uh, you mentioned, yeah, three hops, obviously, um, and that would be the ideal, say, uh, to do when looking out from the DHC. Uh, if we assume, say, there, there are three hops to get to the target, three DHC hops today, mm -hmm. would, it, would it necessarily need to be three extra hops per hop, or would it be because we had extra hops anyway, it's not point to point. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we can reduce that three to less to lesser value so that latency doesn't get such a big hit. Mm, okay, you mean sense, Yeah, you mean for like DHC lookup specifically? Because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. gonna go through like multiple DHC nodes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um yeah, that's a good question. Um I guess I guess the first thing that comes to mind is kind of what I asked you previously, which is like doing um, like the recursive lookup through the DHT instead of like the iterative. So I believe there is some issue with doing the recursive lookup, but um, essentially like if you did that, then each node would, um, it would like, yeah, forward the traffic from the previous node and then not know like which node was the originator. So that is kind of a similar idea, I guess that could be implemented. Yeah, so it might not, um, yeah, it wouldn't be on your routing basically if you added, if you, did recursive lookup instead, I think. Yeah. When you have often like a coming into an exit node, you reuse that exit node in you know, that circuit for multiple different connections. Um, so you could imagine making one circuit and then having it do the multiple queries and it keep from the same exit. Mm -hmm. um, and you could potentially even imagine that that exit would query the first one and then do the whole query for you. Yeah. And that has less of a amplification worry because it knows that you did the effort of constructing the circuit to establish that. So it doing mm -hmm. multiple hops of work for your one request is less because you've actually done. It knows that you've done multiple circuit setups to get to it as an exit, but you do have less amplification worry. So there's potentially ways to have with a with an exit in the context of and you just also have some you know, versus just always having a work of the case. Cool, okay, I guess not.